Four people have been charged with visa fraud. All of them are suspected of hiding their ties to the Chinese military. If convicted, each faces a maximum of 10 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. All four were involved with research at multiple universities and lied about their involvement with the Chinese military. One of them is a fugitive Chinese researcher at the University of California. She took refuge at the San Francisco Chinese consulate. Prosecutors say her case demonstrates the Chinese consulate in San Francisco provides a potential safe harbor for an official to avoid prosecution in the U.S. In addition to their arrests, the FBI is looking into similar visa fraud in 25 cities, which are also suspected of being affiliated with the Chinese military. The Assistant Attorney General for National Security called it part of the CCP's plan to take advantage of our open society and exploit academic institutions. The U.S. responds to China's order to shut down an American consulate. The White House press secretary urges the Chinese regime to avoid engaging in tit-for-tat retaliation. NTD's Miguel Moreno has more on the U.S.-China consulate conflict. A response from the White House to the regime after it ordered a U.S. consulate in China to shut down hours after a Chinese consulate met with the same fate in Houston. Yes, our action to direct the closure of the PRC consulate general in Houston was taken to protect American and to, to protect American intellectual property and Americans' private information. And we urge the CCP to cease these malign actions rather than engage in tit-for-tat retaliation. So that's where we Secretary of State Mike Pompeo called the Chinese consulate a hub of spying and intellectual property theft. The New York Times reported that they obtained a document outlining several FBI investigations tied to the Houston consulate, which included attempts to illegally transfer medical research from institutions in the area. The Chinese Communist Party defended its order to close, accusing the U.S. consulate of interfering in China's domestic affairs and harming China's security interests. The measure taken by China is a legitimate and necessary response to the unreasonable action by the U.S. But the Chinese consulate in Houston isn't the only one accused of criminal and questionable activities. Earlier this year, the Chinese consulate in Chicago sent a draft resolution to Wisconsin State Senator Roger Roth. They asked him to propose the resolution, which praised the CCP's efforts to stop the spread of the virus. I mean, what they tried to get the free people of Wisconsin to do in passing a sham resolution that they wrote full of propaganda uh, supporting their cover-up in the COVID-19 pandemic, that was alarming and shocking and should be to any free person in the world. Roth says he fully supports the Trump administration's decision to shut down the consulate in Houston, and he says it would be great for Americans and the Chinese people if the CCP operated their consulates with sincerity. But recent events have shown us that the Chinese government, the CCP, is operating their, their consulates in a completely different way, and it should be alarming to every American to know that we have more or less these forward operating bases on American soil that are systematically undermining our businesses, our academia, and our government. Roth says that he wouldn't be surprised if what was happening in Houston is being replicated in other Chinese consulates, in which case he would support a similar order to close. Miguel Moreno, NTD News. In a major speech on China, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo declared the failure of the U.S.'s China policy. A Chinese dissident who attended the speech called it a turning point. He said Pompeo told him that the country's new policy will last for decades. They say democracy comes at a price. For Wei Jingsheng, that price was 17 years in a Chinese labor camp, all for posting a pro-democracy essay in 1978 on Beijing's short-lived democracy wall. But today, Wei said decades of effort to awaken people about the Chinese Communist Party haven't been in vain. Also with us today is the father of the Chinese democracy movement, Wei Jingsheng. He spent decades in Chinese labor camps for his advocacy. Mr. Wei, will you please stand? Wei said the unprecedented recognition of him, a dissident, means the U.S. is truly separating the voice of the Chinese people from, the, from that of the ruling regime. 
He met with the chief diplomat after Thursday's historical China speech in Los Angeles, where Pompeo declared that the decades-long active engagement with the Chinese communist regime has failed. Wei said the choice of the venue, the Nixon Library, has significance. Nearly 50 years ago, then-President Richard Nixon made the trip to China that started the two countries' relationships. The venue has a symbolic meaning. It means that the U.S. is going to have another complete change of its China policy. And its main goals now are to unite other countries to counter the CCP and to push for China's democracy. Wei said he raised a question asked by many Chinese people to Pompeo. How long is the U.S. able to keep its firm stance against the CCP? He explained that this policy is not something they thought of just recently. It will last for many years. It will last for decades. That's the word he used. That basically means that this policy won't change until the Communist Party is taken down, until China walks the path of democracy. But as Communist China's economy grows, the two countries remain intertwined in trade and other areas. Wei said there is bound to be damage to the U.S. side. But Mr. Pompeo said when he answered our questions that the U.S. is willing to take such damage in order to uphold its policies. Even if the CCP drives all of our diplomats out of China, our policy still won't change. It's a very assertive attitude. Wei attributes the change to the awakening of the American people. The U.S. is a democratic country. When the U.S. people haven't awakened to the threats, it's easy for politicians to play some tricks, to appease the CCP and get some benefits as a result. But once the American people awaken, the entire political atmosphere will change. I've noticed some CCP-friendly politicians getting tougher against China right now. Therefore, the American people and their votes are eventually more important than China's money. In the meeting with Pompeo, Wei mentioned the increasing number of Chinese people quitting the Communist Party after news about a potential travel ban against party members was revealed. He said this policy is definitely going to be implemented, but the details of the specifics are still being designed and haven't been settled on yet. Wei said his understanding is that the ban mainly targets CCP agents. The potential order would offer legal tools to punish Chinese spies in the U.S., but isn't meant to affect ordinary Chinese people. Penny Zhou, NTD News. Chinese citizens facing floods have been praised by China's state-run media as champions, but it's not a sentiment shared by the suffering locals. NTD's Tiffany Meyer brings us more. The Yangtze River Basin is facing heavy rain again. In some cities, water level exceeds the overflow warning level by six feet. Since June, it rained 50 percent more than usual for this time of year and reached a record high in almost 60 years. The floodgates of a dam in Anhui province were opened. Flood water spilled out into the fields. About 200,000 people were affected. Many crops were submerged by the flood. Fish and shrimp in the pond were washed away. This is part of the plan to protect places downstream from floods, such as Shanghai, which is much richer than Anhui. Chinese state-run media praised people in Anhui province for giving up their home to save others. But not all the people in Anhui are proud of themselves. One netizen said, but for us farmers, we have spent all we had to plant and grow 50 acres of rice. It cost a lot of money, contracting fees, seed fees, pesticide fees, labor fees, and now it is just submerged in the water. We really don't know how to face the future. 